Bonjour, it's Brielle, and today we're going to talk about factoring the greatest common factor. What is factoring, you may ask? So if you remember the distributive property, factoring is rewriting an expression as a product by reversing the distributive property. So I've written down six examples and let's go through them together. So the distributive property is often used when we're multiplying a number by something in parentheses, by an expression in parentheses. So here we're multiplying two times parentheses x minus three. And to multiply this, we are gonna be distributing this two to the x and then to the three. So two times x, and then bring over that subtraction sign, two times three, which equals two x minus six. So now in the case of factoring the greatest common factor, we're we'd be given an expression like 2x minus 6, and we're told to factor the greatest common factor, and in this case, it's 2, so this is what we would do. 2, and then 2x divided by 2 is x, minus 6 divided by 2 is 3. In the distributive property, we're multiplying this outside number by every term in the expression, and when we're factoring the greatest common factor, we're dividing the greatest common factor by every term in the expression. Okay, so midway through filming, my phone ran out of storage and all the footage got deleted, but I'm just gonna go through everything that I wrote and hopefully you guys won't have a problem following along. Okay, so we're given the expression 4x minus eight, and the first thing you wanna do is look for the greatest common factor between 4x and eight. So what I did was I wrote a factor tree for four and a factor tree for eight. This is prime factorization. So once you get all of your prime factors, you're gonna circle all of them, and then you're gonna see which ones are in common. What are the factors we have in common between this number and this number? Well, this one has two twos and this one has three twos, so the most they could have in common is two twos, right? So you pull out the common factors, two times two equals four, and that is your greatest common factor. When we're factoring the greatest common factor, we're essentially dividing our expression by the greatest common factor. So four X divided by four is X minus eight divided by four is two. So this is our answer. Now for the rest of the examples, I don't use a factor tree because at this point I'm able to see the prime factors in my head. But if you need to, go ahead and pause this video so that you can see the prime factors of 25 are five and five, and the prime factors of 100 are two times two times five times five. All right, so I've written them out like this with the variables so that we can see the common factors easier. There's no variables in common, but they do both have two fives, right? So pull that out, multiply your common factors together, and in this case we have 25, and that is our greatest common factor. So we're gonna be dividing our original expression by our greatest common factor, pull it out, 25 times 25x divided by 25 is x, minus 100y divided by 25 is 4y. And there's your answer. All right, now we are just given variables, x, y, minus z, y. So I'm putting the little multiplication symbol between them so that you could see easier what their common factors might be. In this case, their common factor is y, I've underlined it. So we're essentially, again, we're gonna be dividing this expression by our greatest common factor. So we pull our greatest common factor out on the outside, and we can see xy divided by y is x, put it there, zy divided by y is z minus z. So this is our answer. This one's a little bit different than the examples we've been doing. Right away, I noticed that both of these terms, this one and this one, have in parentheses x minus four in common. So when you're given an equation like this, you can substitute that expression for a variable so that it's visually easier to see what your greatest common factor is. So in this case, I set x minus four to equal a. I've written, rewritten the expression with our new variable, x times a plus two times a. And here you can see that a is our only common factor. So it's our greatest common factor. You can pull it out like what we've been doing. 
a times x, because x a divided by a is x, plus 2a divided by a is 2. And if it's easier to see this, you can do the distributive property, which is the reverse of what we're doing here. So you can distribute this a to x, and you'll get xa. Distribute that a to 2, and you'll get 2a. So now that we've factored out our greatest common factor, we can substitute that expression back in. So a equals x minus 4. Bring that x plus 2 down, and this is your answer. I've written it right here. All right, so for the next two examples, we're gonna be using rules of exponents. Um, if you need a refresher on that, go check out the first video, but I did include the rule we're gonna be using right here. So, x to the power of two times x to the power of three equals x to the power of two plus three, which equals x to the power of five. This rule helps us with regrouping. So this rule also goes backwards. x to the fifth power equals x to the second power times x to the third power, or x to the fifth power equals x to the fourth power times x to the first power. And if you're confused on how we might use that rule of exponents with factoring the greatest common factor, keep watching so that these two examples can show you why that rule of exponents is particularly important for the greatest common factor. In this example, we're given an expression 4x squared minus 5x cubed. The rest, was me solving it. I immediately separated 4x squared into all of its prime factors. So the prime factors of 4 are 2 times 2. And then add your variables. Prime factors of 5 is 5. Add your variables. And then underline all your common factors. So in this case, they both have two x's. So pull out those common factors, multiply them together. And there is your greatest common factor x times x equals x squared. That's our greatest common factor. And here's where we're using regrouping. 2 times 2 times x squared minus 5 times x squared times x. So you could see that this x squared times this x to the first power will equal x to the third power, what we originally started with. So we can pull out our greatest common factor, x squared, times what's left over. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5 times x is 5x. And there's your answer. Last example. We're given the expression 10x squared y cubed plus 5x cubed y to the fourth power. The rest of it was me solving it. So immediately I noticed that the prime factors of 10 are 2 and 5. The prime factors of 5 are 5. So start by writing your prime factors and then start separating all your variables so it's easier to see which variables or which factors both of these terms have in common. I underlined the five because they both have a five. This one has two x's, this one has three x's, so they both have at least two x's in common. This one has three y's and this one has four y's, so they both have at least three y's in common. So I've pulled out all our common factors I've multiplied them together to get 5x squared y cubed, which is our greatest common factor. So once we have our greatest common factor, we can use the regrouping methods up there to rewrite this expression with our greatest common factor. So in this case, we have two times greatest common factor plus greatest common factor times what was left over here, x times y. And now we're gonna be pulling out our greatest common factor, 5x squared y cubed times, divide two times our greatest common factor by the greatest common factor, and you get two. And then we have greatest common factor times xy. Pull out your greatest common factor, and you're left with xy. And this is gonna be your answer. And I've also rewritten it right there. All right, thank you so much for watching. Check out the two previous videos a part of this series. They will be linked down below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share to help your friends out. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time.